Thanks for tuning in to The Rachel Ham Show, where you'll find the inspiration, encouragement, and tools you've been craving. Be sure to hit subscribe and give this video a quick like. Now, here's Rachel. Hi, this is The Rachel Ham Show. I'm Rachel Ham. Kind of like almost nervous doing this show. It's been so long since I've done one. So I'm back. I was away a little bit, if you might have noticed. Um, wow. It's hard to even think about how to explain everything, but um, you know, I had done a show a while back, a few months ago, a couple months ago, I don't know, uh, called Double for Your Trouble, and it was about how I felt like I was in a Job season, and how God had showed me that at the end of Job, you know, you get double for your trouble. Well, since then, I've continued having just super, super hard things. So, um, I'm gonna talk to you about a few of those things. And then I want to go into something really encouraging that God did and that is sweet. And I think it's going to just be such a blessing to you. So, um, you know, I had told you that we had lost some money. I think I'd said that we have, we, we were scammed out of money. Actually, we now know it was a scam. And in fact, I'm going to show you a little clip because Sean Ryan talked about the scam on his podcast. If you don't know Sean Ryan, Sean Ryan is an ex CIA agent who now has a podcast. I really enjoy his show. Check it out. If you, if you don't already follow him, it's really good. He has some really good, interesting guests. His interview with Tucker Carlson was fantastic. His interview with RFK Jr. was fantastic and a lot of them are, but um, he talked about the actual scandal and scam that is being operated by the Chinese in the United States. And so I'm going to show you a little clip about that. I think that we're getting hit from a lot of different angles that don't, that, that, that don't constitute the typical invasion that we're thinking about. we got the fentanyl crisis happening from the cartels, China's behind. Just yesterday, I had a, um, spent the whole day with Williamson County Sheriff's Department. And they were saying that the number one crime here right now is the Chinese are coming in and basically creating these scams with, with cryptocurrency. And so they'll come and to somebody and say, hey, give us $10,000, We'll double it within two weeks. Then they actually double it. So you get, you know, 20, 30 grand back. And they're doing this to, to well to do, affluent, wealthy figures mm -hmm. in society. The next investment's 500,000. It's a million. It's two million. And they just picked a guy up that had scammed, I think they said $12.4 million out of somebody. All this money is going directly back to China. And if it's happening in this county, then it's probably happening in just about every county. Sure. And so they're trying to deplete us of our own currency. Okay. So that is what happened to us. Uh, we were invited to invest. We did. We got really good returns. We pulled our money out. We reinvested, got really good returns, pulled our money out five times. We pulled our money out. And then the next time we invested a lot more and lost it all. It was all stolen from us. And then I was contacted by the FBI about six weeks later, or eight weeks later, something like that, and was told that my information had been found in this ring, this fraud ring that was running the scam, blah, 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 and that they were going to help us get our money back, which was so exciting and encouraging. We were really hopeful that that double for the, our trouble was coming into play and we were going to get everything back and it was going to be great. And um, only to find out that it was part of the scam. It was not the F an FBI agent and it was not an attorney. These multiple people contacted us. It was part of the scam. It was more scam. So which luckily, I mean, we didn't lose any money in that. Uh, they attempted to get some money from us, but luckily we had we didn't lose any money. We didn't do it. We, we figured out it was a scam before we had lost any money with this attorney who was going to help us and all this stuff. So, um, but wow, like to be scammed and to lose pretty much everything that we had. We, we didn't lose our house. Like we have our house, we have our cars. We, we didn't lose that, but we lost everything else that we have. 
And then I went straight into a pretty good um, health situation that I was dealing with. And, you know, we really felt like, and then we had some, some problem situations with our sons and pretty good size problems, like really painful. I think as of an apparent, you know, maybe those were actually the most painful of everything. And so I kind of felt like, okay, well this, I mean, it's gotta be like over, like that's so, it's been so bad and we've been really discouraged. And, but, but, you know, like, now it's probably going to just be the path towards the double for your trouble. But instead, um, I got into a really bad car accident. Somebody ran a stop sign going 60 miles ish an hour and they didn't see the stop sign and they went just plowed straight into me. It was a four way stop and I was at a stop sign and then stopped and then was proceeding through when the car came from my right and was, I think she was looking at her phone, honestly, she was looking down. And as I turned, she, she hit me. So, and what was interesting was, as I left my house that day, I was feeling just a little bit uneasy. And so I was praying, I actually was praying while I got hit. But I'd been praying for like five minutes before that too. I was praying, 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 praying. And one of the things I had prayed was, Lord, I pray that you send your angels behind, you know, ahead of me and behind me. And as I said, behind me, there was a sheriff in a in a driveway and he pulled out and began driving right behind me. And so I joked with the Lord and said, no, I didn't ask for a sheriff. I asked for an angel. I don't want a sheriff. I don't want, I, I don't want to get in trouble for anything. I want an angel. And so I was joking, you know, with the Lord and then continued in praying and then just again, like this uneasy feeling. So I went into just praying in tongues. So I was praying in tongues as I got hit by the car. I was praying in tongues, which is interesting as far as why didn't God prevent me from getting in the car accident, right? Like where, where do you shuffle that into your theology when I was all prayed up and even specifically asking for angels to protect me and got hit by a car and got hurt? pretty badly. I, I, um, got a concussion. I, um, was, I slammed against the center console and then slammed back against the door because my car uh, went spinning out after she hit me. And, um, so I was hurt pretty bad physically. I was hurt with the concussion, which really has caused pretty bad brain fog, um, nausea, dizziness, exhaustion, and then kind of some like anxiety too. Like, that, that was rough, just like just anxiety. And then, and then I wasn't able to drive because I had really bad PTSD and have had to be driven when I'm going places. My son's been driving me, my husband's been driving me, or I'm just like not leaving the house, which has been really hard. And as I was considering the whole, why didn't I get, why wasn't I protected from that? I, I mean, I just, it was bizarre to me that I was like praying like literally for five minutes. I'm not talking about my quiet time, prayer time. I'm talking about when I left the house, I felt uneasy and was praying for protection kind of prayers, like specific, like, Lord, what's going on? I feel uneasy praying for protection. So I was really assessing like, what happened? What? It feels like that was allowed to happen. Like why on earth is another really hard thing happening to us? And that's when I was reminded that Job not only lost everything and was, you know, physically tor tortured and, you know, with the illness and his had problems with his children and lost all of his finances and all his cattle and all the stuff that, that he lost. Um, but it wasn't just that he lost it. It was that God himself had invited Satan to do that to Job. He had, he had suggested it. In fact, he said, have you considered my servant Job? God said to Satan when he was looking for whom he may devour, he said, have you considered Job? So God told Satan, he thought that'd be a good person to harm. Have you considered my servant Job? And so God had already told me that I was in a Job season. I had, that's why I did the double for your trouble video a few months ago, because he had told it to me. He had said, this is Job. This is Job. Study the book of Job. So I studied the book of Job. I brought you that message, double for your trouble. And then 
in this last situation. And I don't even know that it's over. I got to be honest. I'm wondering what's next. <laughs> what's next. I mean, it's just been like one hardship after another. What on earth could be next? And I, I'm not inviting anything else. And I'm hoping that there's nothing else, but there might be. And what I've had to come to is that it doesn't really matter if there is something else or not. It doesn't matter if there's another hardship, another attack, another whatever, um, another loss. God is God. And I will worship him no matter what. I will trust him no matter what. That's what I've been doing. That's what I'm going to continue to do. And I, I've i actually like had like, because I had thought about, you know, you don't want to do this, right? But your mind like kind of goes to, well, what's next? Maybe this, maybe that. You kind of have those vain imaginations that you have to take captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ, which I did. But as I began into this, like, what if that happens or that happens? Oh my gosh. And, you know, started feeling some anxiety. Um, what I thought was, you know what? If everything is taken from me, if my my family all dies, if my home is taken from me, if my cars are taken from me, if I'm on the streets, if I don't have any clothes, if I'm hungry and sick and dying, God is God. I will trust him. And that's it. And I just think it's important that that's, that kind of stuff is settled in our hearts. That it's settled that I don't, I'm not like, okay, I'm not trusting that God is going to take care of me in that he's going to do what I want. And it's going to, it's going to just always go well for me. He said, have you considered my servant Job when Satan was looking for whom he would devour? So it drives me nuts when, when, when there's a mindset that um, God is good because he spares me from this and spared me from that and blesses me in this way. And, and he does those things. He does. He protects us at, at times. He blesses us. He does all kinds of things. But he also allows, as best I can tell from the book of Job, he allows, if not actually suggests, attack on someone he considered to be totally righteous. And then what do, what do people do? People people accuse of, you know, you must be doing something wrong in your life. There must be sin. There must be what? You know, why, like in, in the New Testament, when it says, well, what happened? Why was this man uh, born blind? Did he sin or did his parents? And Jesus is like, no, neither one. And same with Job, right? Like he, he, he was considered so good that God honored him with saying, have you considered my servant Job? Attack him. So I just wonder if there's any chance that you are going through something, that you are struggling, that you are being attacked, or maybe have been in the past, or maybe are going to be in the future. Maybe in those moments when that happens, or even now looking back, you can say, well, God said, have you considered my servant Job? Why would I assume that I would be um, above or or?" In, in a situation where I'm not going to ex experience hardship, if God suggested hardship for one of his favorites, I think we can and should expect the same and have to really have it resolved in our hearts that we don't just love God because he's protecting us and blessing us. And we love God because where were, where were we when he was creating the earth? He's God. And you know what? He gets to do precisely what he wants. And he is going to do what he wants and we need to stay faithful. And I'm, I'm working on that. I'm working on just like staying faithful as I experience one loss and hardship and struggle after another. So now I'm going to shift a little. Okay. So I was, um, I was listening to some videos of RFK Jr. And then some videos of, uh, well, it was about, it was about ladybugs how there's like ladybugs are gone. They've been like disappearing. I don't know if you've noticed that there are no ladybugs. You can look it up. It's like on mainstream media, even, I mean, there's, you can type it into Google and it even will come up the, the ladybugs are like becoming extinct and they're disappearing. And it's, it's, you know, the speculation is it is because of all of the stuff that they are doing to our atmosphere. They're spraying. Uh, this is a theory for YouTube so that YouTube doesn't censor me. 
the theory is that, you know, basically it's chemtrails, that, that, that these planes are spraying all of these very harmful things into our atmosphere. And um, not only are ladybugs disappearing, but all kinds of other things too, like honeybee population has really decreased and, and um, there's lots of things happening. I even am suspicious about how much my vegetables would not grow. I, I couldn't get them to grow certain things. It didn't make sense. They weren't growing. And well, then I look up, you know, they're, they, they're saying, and it's worse where I live because we grow so much of the world's food where I live. So they're trying to hurt the food supply, uh, allegedly. And so they spray all this stuff into the atmosphere and you can see it zigzagging all over the, the um, sky, right? It's like a lattice in the sky and it stays there. And then it forms this gray, hazy, horrible, depressing layer that drives me crazy. It makes me so mad when I look up at it and you just, you can't see the sun. And then they also say they do that to reflect the sun back up to itself because of global warming. Ugh, drives me nuts. And then weather manipulation, uh, we got to notice that the, that this uh, river that is near us, they're going to be diverting the water, the, the um, water association or whatever. I know they're, they're diverting our water. They're cutting it off from coming towards us where it should normally go because of the, the drought that we don't have anymore. It's been raining. You know, we've been talking about this, the record rainfall. We've been praying, getting rain, directing the skies, doing all the stuff, getting rain. But they still still keep saying that we don't have enough and they won't give us water and we have to turn off our sprinklers and everything's dying and it's depressing. And I was standing at my sink doing dishes, feeling very upset about this issue, feeling pissed off that someone can just decide that they want to go spray all of this crap into my atmosphere. And also, by the way, it was making, it felt like it was making me sick. That's part of what it was even caused. I kept getting sick. I've been getting sick a lot the last like few months. I've, I've another part of the Job thing. I've just kind of gone from one illness to the next and, it, and even over summer, which is really weird, right? Normally that's when you're nice and healthy. Not me. I um, have gone from one illness to the next. And then I got stung by a bee and had an allergic reaction to it. So, um, so I was sitting here thinking about this, this atmosphere stuff that, you know, that they're spraying. And I just said, Lord, I just asked that you would put me and my house into a little bubble. And even though I can look right out my window and I see how they're spraying right now, and I see how the gray is settling in above us and we can't see the sun and blah, 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 blah. I just pray that, that you would just put like a bubble around us and that, that my home and that maybe even, you know, just every place I step my foot, wherever I am, that's where you are. Cause you live in me. So wherever we go, like, just put, put me in a bubble, put me in a bubble and let this crap that they're using to, to harm us. Um, that's causing all kinds of illnesses. Aluminum is terrible for you in every single way. It causes all kinds of problems. It's causing all kinds of problems for the animals, uh, for the oceans. There's, there's so many problems that are coming from this, these things that they're doing with the chemtrails, which by the way, uh, Donald Trump and RFK have said on day one, they're going to, that he will be signing an executive order to stop the chemtrails day one. Praise God. Let's get Donald Trump in. So so I'm praying for this. I'm praying that God will put me in a bubble that, the, that this, these chemtrails will not affect my atmosphere and that that applies just everywhere I go. For me, my loved ones, for all of God's people, just put us in a bubble, right? So I'm praying this and I would say I even maybe didn't have a ton of faith as I was praying it in light of everything that's happened. I was a little like, felt a little beaten down, kind of like, well, I was praying for protection when I got hit by a car. So, I mean, I don't know, like if I, if it's even worth praying this, right. But I'm going to anyway, um, cause don't you know that the enemy's goal is to get me to just stop praying or, or just to, he just wants our faith so bad. He wants to steal our prayers, steal our faith. And so anything that can discourage that, that he's all about that. Right. So I thought, of course, he just wants me to stop praying because of this question mark over why would I be praying for protection when I, when I got hit by a car? So it was one of those things that I had to just release to God and say, you know what, this doesn't make sense to me. And this is a mystery. And I'm going to go ahead and just trust you, just trust you with it, just trust you with that mystery, trust you in spite of it. Oh, I'm matching so nicely with my cup. 
So pray for this little bubble, decide to put on some worship music and kind of was thinking about how, because the Holy Spirit is in us everywhere we go, we can dictate the atmosphere. You know, the presence of God in us is stronger than anything negative that's in the air around us or in the atmosphere around us and how, um, how, because the Lord lives in me, the atmosphere in me, around me is of God and was just kind of getting built up, you know, a little bit minute by minute as I was doing the dishes and having the worship music on and thinking about my atmosphere and, you know, protection, picturing, kind of picturing a bubble around me, picturing all that, the spray kind of bouncing off the bubble and, and just getting, getting strengthened as I went. Well, I finished the dis- dishes and I turn around and I see this. Okay, well, what this is, is a ladybug on my kitchen floor. Now, mind you, part of what this this discouragement was and this, um, you know, what was causing me to even have this thought were all of these things I just read about how there are no, no more ladybugs. How ladybugs have disappeared. How the population of ladybugs is like a tenth of what it was a few years ago. It's really bad. It's, it's really a big problem too, because ladybugs do all kinds of good things for our um, our gardens and environment. And it was actually kind of surprising how much ladybugs do. So, so it was so specific. I mean, I was reading about the disappearance of ladybugs because of all the stuff, as I'm seeing all the stuff they're doing literally in real time out my window, putting this all together, having this prayer about my atmosphere, about my environment, and then God puts a ladybug right next to me in my kitchen when I haven't seen a ladybug literally in years. I can't remember the last time I saw a ladybug. And then there was one in my kitchen. I was so excited. I was so excited. I felt like God was saying that thing you were just asking me about how making making your or you are your atmosphere uh, protected from this stuff, which might become even more and more important. Uh, that kind of prayer might become more and more important. Like if there's another biological warfare situation, um, you know, it would be amazing if we can live in bubbles that are supernatural. I felt like God gave me a ladybug to say, you can, you can, you can trust me to put you in a supernatural bubble to keep the Kim trail, Kim trail crap. I'm trying to say, (laughs) and the, the harm, the harmful sprays, any biological weapons, anything else that might be released. Like it's outside of your bubble. So I am believing God for that bubble. That ladybug was so beautiful. I was so excited. I called my whole family like, come look, look at the ladybug. And they were like, cool. Now I'm like, no, you don't understand. (laughs) So I explained, I was just reading about how ladybugs were disappearing and how it's because of the chemtrails and all those, this bad stuff in our atmosphere. And even like literally even mainstream media is reporting on it, is reporting on this, like the disappearance of ladybugs. So, and then, and then, oh my gosh. Look, I was praying this prayer about our environment being protected and being in a bubble and blah, 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 blah. And God gave me a ladybug. So believe the same for yourself. Believe for that bubble, that protection. I think it might become more important in uh, coming days. I don't know how or what other than, I mean, already, like for us, for me here, I don't know if where you live, if there's chemtrails where I live, there are a ton. Our air is horrible. In fact, we're surrounded by a mountain range and half the time we can't even see the mountains because of the crap that they are pouring on us. And it's really, it's it's so bad. It's so bad. So I'm living in a bubble. I want to join you to, I want to invite you to join me to live in your bubble. And if you also are in a hard season or if you need some redemption from a past hard season, um, I just want you to, to know that I'm with you. Uh, I see no sign of double for my trouble yet, but I keep thanking God for it because I keep saying, well, Lord, you told me that I'm in a Job situation and Job lost all this stuff and it was really terrible and all things went wrong and that's what's happening to me. And so I am so excited about that. Thank you. That double for my trouble is coming. I'm very excited. Thank you. And I'm very much just saying that by faith because I don't see any sign of it. 
but you know, it says, oh, this is so cool too. This is the other thing I, I almost forgot. Okay. So God had told me if you have all the answers, if you don't have any question marks in your life, if you don't have any, like what on earth was that? Why did that happen? Where is, where was God? What was God doing is, you know, questions about God or whatever, right? If you don't have, if you don't have any of that, then it, then it doesn't really require faith. Faith is because you don't see something. You're, you're believing something that you do not see. So if I believe that God is good and faithful, even as I'm losing everything and in hardship and in pain and having one trial after another and after another, blah, 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 it requires me to have faith. And this is what's so exciting about that. Scripture tells us without faith, it's impossible to please God. Impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. So this is the thing. I really want to please God. I mean, I, that's like what I live for. I, I live for what is God telling me to do and am I doing it? Is he pleased with me? Living for the audience of one, right? That's my whole life's ambition. So if it's impossible to please him without faith, then I have to have situations that require faith. In fact, you know, of course, there's some measure of, of faith, just believing that there is a God and that Jesus is his son and that we're going to heaven when we die and all that, all that requires faith. But what if I get to have extra specially difficult situations on top of the faith that's already required for that other stuff? What if I get to have other super hard situations that require even more faith? Is it possible that we're being given an opportunity to please God even more? Is it possible that we're like storing up treasures for ourselves in heaven? I think it is. I don't think it's possible. I think it's very likely. I think it's maybe precisely what's happening because the Lord knows I want to please him. And if it's impossible to please him without faith, then I'm really thankful for these situations that are requiring a lot of faith. So maybe you can look at your hard situations that way too. Stay faithful through them. I'm with you. It's nice to be back with you. I missed you even though I don't feel like I've been capable of doing a show over these last weeks with everything that's been going on. But I am glad to be back. And on Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, I'm going to be interviewing Special Agent Victor Avila. Victor was with Homeland Security until he was almost killed by the Mexican cartels. He was shot three times, and it was a very bad situation where his supervisor knowingly sent him into danger, basically gave him a death wish. Um, it is really bad. But he uh, does a lot of great work now on the border and on, with human trafficking. He is a sweetheart, a jewel. I just really enjoy him so much. I met him years ago and have gotten to know him even more through the years. So I'm going to be interviewing him on Monday at 8 a.m. And he is going to share his very interesting story and testimony of what happened to him. And then also is going to fill us in on some stuff about the border that you might not hear other places. And, um, and also he has been uh, talking with, so president Trump and who was in charge of Homeland security under president Trump Holman. Is that his name? I think that's his name. So, so Victor, special agent Victor Avila has met with both of them about going to work for Trump when he gets into back into office. And he has a plan for solving the border situation and the deportation situation. And so it's great. It's very exciting. So he's going to be on with me on Monday at 8 a.m. So hopefully I will see you then. And my birthday is this weekend. Very exciting because I love birthdays. My birthday is Sunday. I'll be 48 years old. And if I can be honest, I'm kind of feeling it right now <laughs> with everything that's happened. I feel old and I feel tired, but it's okay. It's okay. It's going to get better. Like I said, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Thank you, Lord. It's going to get better. Thank you for double for your trouble. Looking forward to that. Okay. That's all for now. Have a wonderful weekend. God bless you and know that you are loved. See you next time. Thanks for watching The Rachel Ham Show. If you found value in today's content, would you consider giving a gift? Any amount is appreciated, and the links to give are in the description box below this video. Or 
Perhaps you'd like to buy one of Rachel's products so she can continue bringing content like this to you. All the links to purchase her products are in the description box below the video. To find out more about Rachel, you can go to her website, rachelham.com. That's rachelham.com. See you in the next episode of The Rachel Ham Show.